New Orleans Saints wide receiver Ted Ginn 19 pulls in a touchdown reception in front of Carolina Panthers cornerback James Bradbury 24 in the first half of an NFL football game in New Orleans, Sunday, Jan. 7, 2018. Butch Dill Associated Press The latest on the NFL playoffs on wildcard weekend All times est 545 p.m. Drew Brees' nine-yard pass to wide-open tight end Josh Hill has given the New Orleans Saints a 143 lead in the second quarter of their NFC wildcard game against the Carolina Panthers. Brees completed all seven of his passes on the 75-yard drive, highlighted by a 19-yard completion to Michael Thomas, who also made a sudden mover after a catch along the left sideline for a 13-yard gain to set up the score. Brees is 9 of 12 for 163 yards and two touchdowns, nearly half of them coming on an 80-yard scoring pass to Ted Ginn on the previous drive. Underscore 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 535 p.m. The Saints appear to have lost starting left guard Andrew Speed to a lower left leg injury. Pete went down while blocking on a short run by Alvin Kamara with 12.38 left in the second quarter. Saints medical staff brought out a cart to take Pete off of the field as teammates gathered around him to show their support. The 6'7", 316-pound Pete was the Saints' first-round draft pick in 2015 out of Stamford, where he played left tackle. He has played both at guard and tackle as needed during his three-year NFL career, underscore 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 530 p.m. Graham Garno's 27-yard field goal has given the Carolina Panthers their first points of their NFC wildcard game in New Orleans. The kick, which trimmed the Saints' lead to 73 early in the second quarter, came after Carolina quarterback Cam Newton overthrew Greg Olson near the right sideline on third down. The Panthers got within striking distance thanks to Ken Crawley's 39-yard pass interference penalty on Kaelin Clay, giving Carolina a first down on the Saints' 13-yard line. New Orleans defense held from there, however. Underscore underscore 515 p.m. Two plays after Graham Garno surprisingly missed a 25-yard field goal attempt for only his second miss this season, the Saints used a big play to take a 70 lead late in the first quarter of New Orleans' playoff matchup with Carolina. Drew Brees found former Panther Ted Gann deep down the middle for an 80-yard touchdown. Ginn had gotten behind cornerback James Bradbury and Brees unloaded the ball moments before the pocket collapsed behind him. Once the speedy Ginn had the ball in his hands, he was able to sprint away from Bradbury. That Ginn touchdown was the longest play from scrimmage by New Orleans this season as well as the longest play from scrimmage allowed by Carolina this season. It was also the longest Saints touchdown in the playoffs since the 2009 divisional round when Reggie Bush had an 83-yard punt return. It was a tough turn of events for Carolina, which had converted three third downs and nearly capped a 63-yard drive with a touchdown before Garno's missed kick. Underscore 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 415 p.m. Jacksonville quarterback Blake Bortles had more rushing yards than passing, but it was enough to help them advance from the wildcard round with a 103 victory over Buffalo. Bortles, who directed the Jaguars to their first postseason appearance since 2007, had 88 yards rushing on 10 attempts and was 12 of 23 passing for 87 yards. The game was tied 33 at halftime, but Jacksonville took the lead late in the third quarter with a 15-play drive covering 86 yards in 852. The drive culminated in Bortles' one-yard touchdown pass to Ben Koyak with 49 seconds remaining in the third quarter. Buffalo, which was making its first postseason appearance since 1999, had one final chance after the two-minute warning. Quarterback Tyrod Taylor was injured with 127 remaining when his head hit the turf after being tackled by Dante Fowler following a two-yard gain on third and five at the Bills' 42. Nathan Peterman came in and scrambled for four yards to keep the drive a three plays later. Peterman was intercepted by Ramsey at the Jaguars' 47. The Jaguars advanced to face the second-seeded Steelers on Jan. 14 in Pittsburgh, underscore 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 3.30 p.m. Jacksonville's longest drive in its postseason history has given it a 103 lead over Buffalo after three quarters in an AFC wildcard game. The Jaguars took the lead with a 15-play drive covering 86 yards in 852. The drive culminated in Blake Bortler's one-yard touchdown pass to Ben Koyak with 49 seconds remaining in the quarter. 
Jacksonville had seven first downs on that drive after having six on its first seven possessions. Leonard Fournay had eight carries for 35 yards on the drive while Bortles was three of three for 29 yards. Bortles is 11 of 21 for 85 yards while Fournette has 55 yards on 14 carries. Buffalo's Tyrod Taylor is 13 of 26 for 98 yards while Leslie and McCoy has 15 carries for 66 yards. Jacksonville, which had the ball for just 949 in the first half, had it for 1043 in the third quarter. Underscore 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 240 p.m. Buffalo and Jacksonville traded field goals over the final 149 of the second quarter and a tied 33 at halftime in an AFC wildcard game. Stephen Hauschka's 31-yard field goal gave the Bills a 30 lead. The kick came at the end of an 18-play, 71-yard drive that took 806. Buffalo had first on goal at the Jaguars' one after Telvin Smith was called for a neutral zone infraction on Hauschka's 21-yard field goal attempt but squandered it when Kelvin Benjamin was called for offensive pass interference in the end zone. The Jaguars were finally able to move the ball on the final drive of the half. They took over at their 47 with 40 seconds remaining and got into field goal range on Blake Bortler's scrambles of 20 and 12 yards. Josh Lambeau tied it with two seconds remaining on a 44-yard field goal. Bortles, who was 6 of 15 for 33 yards in the first half, also was Jacksonville's leading rusher with three carries for 35 yards. Tyrod Taylor was 11 of 21 for 90 yards along with six carries for 25 yards. Leslie and McCaughey has 12 carries for 36 yards. The Bills had the ball for 2009 in the first half. Underscore 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 140 p.m. Buffalo and Jacksonville are scoreless after the first quarter. Bills running back Leslie and McCoy has 12 yards on seven carries while playing with a sprained right ankle. He could be without one of his starting offensive linemen the rest of the way. Guard Richie Incognito left the game with a shoulder injury and is questionable to return. Buffalo tight end Charles Clay also is questionable to return with a hamstring injury. Tyrod Taylor has completed 7 of 10 passes for 55 yards, hitting 7 different receivers. The Jaguars managed just 27 yards in the first quarter. Underscore 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 120 p.m. Commissioner Roger Goodell says it is good for the league that 8 of the 12 teams in this year's playoffs are new. Goodell was in Jacksonville for Sunday's AFC wildcard game between the Jaguars and Buffalo Bills after being in Los Angeles on Saturday night. The competition is great, Goodell said. Two of those teams came from last to first Jacksonville and Philadelphia. I think it brings hope for our fans and communities that their teams can turn it around. Four teams that weren't in the playoffs last season are assured of playing next weekend, Tennessee, Philadelphia and the winners of Jacksonville, Buffalo and Carolina, New Orleans. Underscore 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 the NFL playoffs continue Sunday with a doubleheader starting in Jacksonville, Florida, where the Jaguars and Buffalo Bills ended lengthy postseason droughts to make a wildcard game. The third-seeded Jaguars 106 won the AFC South and earned their first home playoff game since January 2008. The sixth-seeded Bills 97 won three of their final four in the regular season and sneaked in when Cincinnati stunned Baltimore last Sunday. The nightcap features the fourth-seeded New Orleans Saints 115 and the no. 5-seed Carolina Panthers 115 at the Superdome. It's the third time they've met this season. If Jacksonville wins, it will play at number 2-seed Pittsburgh next weekend. If Buffalo wins, it will play at top-seeded New England. The Panther Saints winner will play at Minnesota next week. Underscore 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 for more NFL coverage http www.pro32.app.org and http www.twitter.com app underscore NFL copyright 2018 The Associated Press. All rights reserved. This material may not be published, broadcast, rewritten or redistributed.